Lisa, you're currently the co-host of the ABC's breakfast program, News Breakfast. Over the years, have amassed a strong following on social media and also off, uh, but just recently left your Twitter account with almost 55,000 followers because of vulgar attacks online. Why did you leave and what responsibility do you believe social media companies have to their users to address abuse? Oh, look, I was completely blown away by the response to my action. It had been building over about six months. I was feeling that the attacks seemed to be more coordinated and they stretched, you know, across the personal um, appearance, uh, politics. But then I got to the point where I was taking phone calls from people who were saying, are you okay because you're trending again on Twitter? And it just felt like it was becoming this big thing in my life that not only was I getting attacked for decisions that were completely out of my hands, um, I was getting attacked for interviews I hadn't even done that weren't even on News Breakfast. There was one day I got a pile on for an interview that Fran Kelly had done on RN Breakfast. So I thought, you know what, I'm pretty much being bullied every day by strangers and I don't have to actually accept this. So I just thought quietly, I'm gonna step away. I'll just pause it for a month and I'll see how I feel. But someone spotted that I'd stepped away and that then became a story in itself because the pylon on me for daring to, to take myself off the platform just confirmed to me that it was the right thing to do. I thought it was interesting that even though I was on the front of the age and Lee Sales wrote a great column about social media abuse, there was no reach out from Twitter. I thought it might be interesting that as a company, they might have sent me a note or, you know, I'm not like I had 55,000 followers. It's not huge, but it's not insignificant. Uh, and the fact that it generated so much news coverage about what was going on, I found that interesting. I also found that the other times previously when I'd tried to go through the complaints process with the social media platforms, that at, that had been so slow and not terribly adequate that at the end of the day, unfortunately, I felt that the only thing left to me was just to step off the platform. Some of the verbal attacks you received were very personal in nature and relating to appearance. Do you believe women are at greater risk of trolling on social media platforms? And if so, what can be done about this? That's the hundred million dollar question, quite frankly, what can be done about it? I can tell you that it was an interesting experience to sit next to Michael Rowland because we're both doing the same job and he could see how I was being um, approached on social media by people who, I mean, many of them weren't even viewers. That's the thing, like they'd just start a pile on and join it and wouldn't even know what the original tweet or item might have been about. And Michael was not getting the same. Michael was not getting anyone telling him he had tuck shop arms and he should stop flapping them around. That person who tweeted that, I ended up complaining to Twitter. Not that I care if I've got tuck shop arms, but I thought, you know what, let's just sort of see how Twitter handles this kind of very personal. Um, and you know, there were a few other things that this person said as well. Well, it took Twitter two and a half weeks to come back and confirm that they had blocked this person. But I just checked a moment ago, and this person is still online on Twitter and still generating the kinds of tweets that I would classify as offensive. And I think that's very interesting. And now Lisa, a question I'm asking all participants, do you believe the responsibility of regulating social media platforms is up to the governments, the technology companies or the users themselves? Look, I'm really torn over this because I think that we are heading towards governments wanting to try and regulate more. And I don't know that what we've seen in other countries where there's been the regulation, especially the idea of removing the anonymous um, handles for um, tweeters has worked. And in fact, I know that Twitter has been and can be a powerful um, platform in giving people a voice who have been unable to have that voice before. So 
I wish that the companies themselves had approached this with more urgency. They certainly are developing ideas, Instagram as well. They're finding safety modes. They're enabling um, you to not to block some people from mentioning your tweets. And one of the things that I'd like to see is that if someone is blocked from Twitter, that they can't use the same email address that they use to sign up to then just create another account. Um, you know, I feel like there's not been the urgency. I'm unsure that what the government has planned is the right plan. It, there, there are things that worry me about that. At the end of the day, I don't want to see anyone lose their voice um, except the trolls. And I have to keep reminding myself, this is a very small proportion. Unfortunately for me, it was a daily deluge and that just became too much for me to bear. Uh, and in fact, I think about it that by removing myself from Twitter, I did silence my own voice, but that was a balance that I, and it was a decision that I had to take. The jury's still out, but we all need to be talking about what's going on.